Okay, uh, let's start. So welcome to the Git workshop in uh, Orbital 2021. Um, I'm Howe, right, from NUS Hackers. And I think, let me see. Uh, with me, I have uh, Joel and uh, Shah here, right? Um, so um, throughout the workshop, if you have any um, questions, please uh, feel free to put it in the Zoom chat, uh, preferably, or uh, yeah, put it in the Zoom chat. Don't put it in MS Teams. Um, because it's a bit hard to monitor multiple chats at once. Um, I've sent the link to the slides in the uh, Zoom chat. Um, and let's see. Yeah, so if you have any questions, just ask it in the Zoom chat, right? And if you get uh, lost, right? Um, if you get lost, then uh, I'll, you can uh, just ask in the chat, ask for help, right? And um, yeah, if you get severely lost, then uh, we can... Uh, you can enter one of the breakout rooms and then um, either Joel or uh, Neil can help you. Yeah. Um, okay. So other than that, let's get started. Yeah. So uh, again, slides are here. Um, I've also sent the link in uh, MS uh, Teams, right? Uh, in case you... Um, yeah, I'll also send the link in MS Teams so you can refer to that later. And um, as you can see, the session is being recorded. So you can um yeah, you can refer to the recording uh, later on after the workshop. Um yeah, if this workshop is actually quite similar to some others that I have run. So uh, there are recordings of those other workshops that I have run as well. Um yeah. All right, so um let's get started. Yes, so uh, I hope everyone has managed to install Git, right? Um, the command line Git. Um, if you use a you know a graphical interface, I will not be touching on that uh, today, right? Uh, because yeah, I think you can figure out the if you know the you know how Git itself works, right? You you can you know figure out how um you can figure out how the you, how to use the any graphical interface you want to use, Like um, actually, I can't remember what graphical interfaces there are. Yeah. So I personally prefer to use the command line, but you know, I think there are a lot of people who like to use the graphical, uh, some graphical interface for Git, right? and that's okay. But again, I still think it's good to know how. Uh, it's important to know how you know the Git itself works before you use um a graphical interface, lah. Because the graphical interface is still just an interface, right? Um, and of course, um, I think by now you should have a GitHub account, right? Um, some important things to keep with you, your um, Git manual, right? Um, so these are the man pages. Um, they are like, the, I mean, the documentation for Git. Lah. So they tell you exactly what each command does and um, the flags to use, right? Um, if you have never used a command line uh, this may be uh may take some getting used to right but uh, it's never too late to start yeah and there is also this book uh, called uh, progate right um it's a open it's open source is it open source i don't know uh, but it's a publicly it's a freely out oh, it is open source yeah so it's a freely available book right and you can read about um uh, you can have you can read a book about git here um and the slides are sort of loosely based on the first few uh, chapters of this book. I, I say loosely because I have changed it quite a lot um, in the past few years. Yeah. Um, actually, it's only the starting points, uh, starting few slides. Uh. Yeah. So uh, these are the two things, right? And yes. Um, so let's talk about what Git is. And uh, before I do that, let me open up the breakout rooms, right? So in case you uh, need help again, right? Uh, you should be able to join. You should be able to join those breakout rooms, right? Um, and then, uh, or you can you can you can ask in the chat, right? And then um, if you feel that if you feel that you need help, just say that you need one to one um, help, and uh, one of us will uh, go to the breakout room with you and then help you. Okay, so what is Git, right? Uh, Git is what we call a distributed version control system. So version control system is just uh, some software to manage, you know, um, 
you know, revisions in your source code or whatever. Like. It may not be source code. It could be documentation, um, other, other files, you know. And distributed means that basically, you know, every, uh, you know, everyone, you, you, your repositories, right, they all um, sort of work offline. They're all independent copies of each other. Um, and it's sort of, as, op as opposed to, you know, centralized version control systems, right? Um, when centralized version control systems uh, means that you have a central server, right? And, and that server contains all of the data, right? And whatever you do, you are connecting to that server and, you know, transferring the data. In Git, um, you know, your local repository contains all the data, right? That means you can look at the history, you can, you know, look at, you can move to older commits, you can do everything, right? Uh, without internet access, right? Uh, other than you, you can't push without internet access, but, you know, um, other than that, you can do everything um, in the repository without internet access because your local uh, copy of the repository contains uh, all of the data. So that's why it's called distributed, right? Because everyone, basically everyone contains, uh, everyone's repositories or, or clones of the repository will contain, um, it, it's a full copy, like, it's not that it, it contains all of the history, all of the data in the repository and you can do everything that you can do even without uh, any internet connection to any central server. And the fact is, is what, when we say distributed, it also means that there is no um, central server um, inherent to Git, right? Um, and yeah, um, you know, everyone's copy of the repository is as, uh, you know, there, there is no inherent central server, like, although you can use Git in a manner that uh, has a central server, right? That's totally up to you. And again, this is opposed to other uh, version control systems where there is a central server and, you know, you, you have, there you can't use it as if um, there is, you can't use this, you can't use it as if it were distributed. So um, for those version control systems, the central server is the uh, the authoritative source, right? And everything you do goes through that server. Okay, so that's what a DVCS is, right? Um, and the other part about Git, uh, how Git works, right, is that um, every commit is a snapshot of your files, right? What I mean by this is that uh, basically when you create, a, when you add files to the repository and you commit, yeah, you uh you basically are saving this version of the files to the repository, right? And um, this is opposed to uh, those patch-based uh, version control systems, meaning that instead of saving your files themselves, right, those other systems, they save patches uh, or the differences between commits, right? Uh, so Git does not do that. Git is uh, snapshot-based, meaning it saves the files themselves, right? And if you want to look at the differences between commits, those are actually computed on the fly, right? So what is saved is, uh, and, and this this sort, and it's important to know this because it sort of affects the way, uh, it, it sort of affects the way Git works, right? And um, yeah, it's quite important to know. So again, uh, Git saves the snapshots of your files, right? Rather than saving the differences between each commit. So when you look at a commit, it's, uh, when you look at a commit, right? Although Git shows you the difference from the previous commit, it's not, that's not what it's actually saved, right? It's computing that difference on the fly. So, um, yeah. Okay, so now the three areas of Git, right? And before I get into this, I just uh, want to talk a bit about how, uh, how Git actually saves its data. And the reason is that, um, Unfortunately, even though, you know, the idea behind Git is actually very simple, right? Um, unfortunately, the implementation is a very, the, or the abstraction or, or the interface, how to say, um, is a very leaky interface, right? Um, it, it, it sort of exposes a lot of the abstraction or implementation details to you. And therefore, it's good to know how, it's good to know these details, uh, um, how Git actually works under the hood. And that will let you understand exactly what you're doing uh, when you do certain uh, commands in Git. <coughs> so um, how exactly does Git store data, right? Um, so again, as I mentioned, Git is a snapshot-based uh, uh, VCS, right? Meaning that it saves the files themselves. So when you have a file, right? Um, well, you have a file, right? 
uh, the way Git works is it will hash the file, right? Um, and if you don't know what a hash is, a hash is basically uh, some function, right? You take, it will take any size of data and it will get you uh, a constant size of output, right? So regardless of size of input, you'll get a constant size output, right? Um, and in Git's case, currently it uses a SHA-1 um, SHA hash, right? So <coughs> the output is, I um, can't remember how long the output is, but it's a constant number of characters. Um, right? And so from the output, the hash of that file, Right, is what Git uses to refer to that file everywhere else, right? So when you have a file in a repository, you can you, you can have lots of files in a repository, right? And each of these files have a certain uh let's let's call the hash A, B, C, D, E. Okay. So you have files and then um in a repository you also have directories, right? So how are that how do directories work? Um directories are just a list of files. Huh? And directories, right? So suppose you have a directory um, and contains file A, B, C, then yeah, so you have a directory that contains file A, B, C. So these are files again, and this is a directory. And uh, we can call this directory X, okay? So it contains uh, files A, B, C, and maybe another directory Y. Right, and then uh, this directory contains files D, E, F. Um, and then, yeah, so, and maybe this directory contains directory Y. So Y is a child of directory X, right? And finally, you can have a commit. So you have a commit, right? What is a commit is another just, it's just a bit of information saying um, the author, uh, you, whatever, right? um, date, and just a uh, root directory. So this is what a commit looks like in Git, right? It, it, um, in, internally, right, what it's storing is just uh, some information about the commit, right? As well as the, just the root directory of the uh, directory. And all of these are referred to by the hash of the data, right? So you hash this and you get X, and then the commit here will refer to the directory using, um, the commit here will, uh, sorry, the commit will refer to the directory using its hash, right? Um, and, and same applies for all of these. So all of these are all these values are the hash of those or the contents of um of whatever it is, right? The hash of the contents of the directory. And when I say contents of directory, I just mean the sort of uh, list of files in the directory. And commits also have a hash. So you can take a hash of this, right? And uh, you get some hash, right? And that's how you uh you get a chain, right? Um so let's say this gives you um let's say i, right? Uh, so this is commit i, right? And if you have another commit, you have another commit, um, you have another commit, right? And let's say this root directory is something else, uh, whatever. Lah, huh? So you can, and this will hash to a different value. So let's say we, it hashes to s, right? Um, then how do you how do you have pet you know how do you make a list of how do you make a chain of commits in git or how does git represent this chain of commits basically uh, when you make a new commit let's say this commit is a child commit of this right then you just say parent is um, s right and therefore you get a chain so this commit says this commit is its parent and maybe this commit will say another commit it's its parent right um, and therefore you get a chain of commits and that's how you get your history in Git, right? Um, and you will see that later on we will discuss, uh, we will, I will be showing like, you know, when, when I discuss the commands, um, I will show how the commands affect the, uh, you know, form the structure of commits and you will see that it forms a graph, right? Um, and if you think about, uh, you know, the Git operations as operations on a graph, right? Uh, most of it will make sense, like. Um, and you know exactly what you're doing. By the way, if you are interested in blockchain, Git is the original blockchain, right? Because this is literally a blockchain. Okay. Okay. Um, so now back to the three areas. 
what are the three areas in Git? So um, in Git, uh, and again, this is another part of how Git works, right? Um, there are three sort of areas where your files are. So the working directory, right, is literally the files you see, lah, where you actually, you know, the, the, um, the files that you actually work on, right, those are in the working directory. So once you have, you know, made modifications to the files, whatever, right, um, then you will sort of add them into the index or staging area, right? And the staging area is basically where you construct a commit. And finally, you have the uh, repository itself, right? Or let's say a commit, right? And that is, you know, the actual files that are in the uh, actually committed. Lah. So um, when you start off, uh, when you first, you know, check out, uh, when you first clone a git a repository, right? Um, all of these are equal. Oh, hold on a second. So when you first uh, check out a Git repository, all of these are equal, right? Then you will make changes to the, um, you make changes in the working directory. So there are some changes here, right? Then you can stage it into the staging area. And when you stage it into a staging area, um, then, I'll, yeah, so, so okay, wait, before that, uh, actually, yeah, before that, right? Um, so again, when you first check out a Git repository, all these three, places have the same contents, right? Um, all the same files, right? Uh, you make changes here, then your, your working directory is now sort of dirty or has changes, right? And you can see these changes in uh, git diff, which we'll talk about later, right? And then now they're in the staging area. Uh, so, yeah, sorry. Before you make, before you add them to the staging area, you can, uh, Someone asked me for the slides, so let me send it again. Uh, please try not to PM me, right? Uh, for any questions, just ask in the chat um, so that everyone can see the questions, okay? Um, okay let, me, let me repeat what I was saying. What I was saying so. Um, working. Okay, so as I was saying, right, when you first check out a repository, right, uh, these three areas are equal. When you make changes to the working directory, right, um, then you can see these changes using git diff, which we'll talk about later. So don't worry if you miss this, right? I'm just trying to give an overview. And once you stage the once you stage the changes or add the changes to the index, right, then um, these two will then be equal again, right? Um, so then these two will be equal, right? So I'll use blue to represent that, right? And now the now you can look at the changes between the staging area and the Git repository using, uh, so these will have changes, right? And then you can look at the changes using uh, Git diff dash s, which stands for dash stage, right? And so I'll talk about this later, so don't worry if you miss it. Um, and then once you commit. Once you commit from the staging area into the repository itself, um, then you know um, these three will again be equal again. So that's basically how Git works, lah. Yeah. So once you commit, then all three of these will be equal again, right? So that's how Git works. Okay. Um, so this is just a high level idea. It might not make sense until uh, you might not make sense until you get a uh, until you actually get to uh, play with the commands themselves. Okay. All right. Um, so let's get started, right? Uh, and we get started with some configuration. So, so um, as I mentioned just now, Git will actually store the, uh, or I, I, 
I sort of showed it just now a bit. Git will actually store the author information, right, in each commit, right? And therefore, you have to configure it uh, when you uh, use it before you use Git, right? And the way to configure it is to do this. So how do you, you, you run this in a command line, right? Um, and you can just configure, you know. So let me actually put this here. So um, how do you configure Git? You just run these commands, right? Um, run these commands. And of course, you should replace this with your actual name. But um, for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to use these dummy values, right? Um, and this email, you should use the email or some email that you have put in, uh, you have registered with GitHub, right? And so that uh, the comments are properly attributed to your account, right? Um, of course, it's, it will be fine if you don't, but then your, your comments won't be linked to your GitHub account. Right? And oh, there's another thing, which is that Git and GitHub are separate things. Okay, So Git, Git and GitHub are independent, and, and GitHub is just a company that provides uh, hosting for Git repositories. They're also the most popular. But yeah. So you should do this configuration. right? Um, otherwise, Git will yell at you when you try to commit. Okay, Next. Um, you need to set up your editor, right? Um, so because Git sometimes will launch a uh, text editor when you try to, when you commit, right? Um, in order to say, edit the commit message or other things. So you need to set up your uh, text editor, right? Um, so if you're on Linux or Mac, you can use the first three commands, right? Um, one of these, depending on what you use, um, you can use Vim as well. Uh, yeah, whatever you use, you can use one of these. And if you're on Windows, you might want to use the bottom two, right? Um, depending on whatever editor you want to use. Lah. No, you do not need to configure for every new project, right? Uh, this is global configuration. So every time you, uh, th this configuration is saved to your uh, user directory in your computer lah, um, in a file called .git config. Right, these files, th these configurations are saved to your uh, .git config in your user directory. Right. Um, and so you only need to configure it once, you know, or if you change computers, then you need to configure it on that new computer. Um, yeah. And that's because you can see this is um that's because you can see this is set to uh global configuration. So if you don't if you leave this off, then it's going to go to the repository specific con uh, repositories configuration so you can have a different configuration for a particular repository like if you want right um, and they will sort of over override so the repositories configuration is going to override the global configuration so if you want you can have a different author name for a particular repository uh, when you downloaded git last week the install options seem to include the editor already yeah i think if I'm not wrong, the Git installer on Windows uh, actually asks you for the editor to use. So um, if you have used the installer, then that's probably fine. Um, is there a difference for Git bash versus Git command versus using command on Windows? Uh, uh, no, not really. Um, when I use Windows um, long, long ago, right, um, I just use command and I put, uh, I put uh, Git into my path, right, so that I could use it from the actual, the normal Windows command line, right? Um, if I'm not wrong, if you use git bash, then you get a proper, uh, you know, bash environment, which you may or may not prefer. Lah. Right. Uh, the bash is the Linux or Unix shell, right? One of the Unix shells. So you can use bash commands. If you're using Windows CMD, then you have to deal with Windows shell commands. Lah. Windows shell commands are terrible. But anyway, um, it won't affect you in this workshop lah, because we're just using git commands. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's move on. So, um, yeah. So again, you have the Git uh, documentation, right? Uh, which I have linked to in one of the slides, uh, one of the earlier slides, right? Um, and yeah, you get to this. Uh, alternatively, right? You can always access the help for command using the Git um, help command. So let's say I want to look at um how to commit, you can do this, git help commit, right? And then it will uh, show me the git manual, right? Um, if you're on Windows, I think it might, when you run this command, it might actually uh, open a web browser. 
Yeah. Um, and the other way to look at uh look at command help is to use the dash h option, right? And this is slightly different, right? Instead of pulling up the entire man uh, manual page, it just gives you a summary of the options, lah. So depending on what you want to do, uh, or depending on what you want, you can use uh, dash h look at a summary, um, of the options, or you can uh, pull up the full page using git help. Right? Or if you prefer, you can just go to the website, lah. Okay. All right. Okay, let's get uh into Git proper now, right? So we are going to create a new Git repository. So um, I'm going to send the slides again, right? Because now you might you really should uh have the slides in order to follow along. Right, and if uh in case you haven't noticed, right, the bottom uh, right corner here there is a slide number, so you can um. which I'll zoom in a bit, right? So it's easier to see, right? There is a slide number here, so you can see, um, yeah, you can you can refer to the slide quickly. Uh. Right, and if you're trying to, um, if you're trying to jump around the slides, right, you can press escape, right? If you press the escape key, you get into this overview, uh, yeah, overview of the slides, um, and then you can quickly find the slide, uh, find the slide that um, you, you want to go to. Uh. Okay, so let us create a new Git repository, right? How do you create a new Git repository? Right, you need to go to a new directory. So I'm going to create a new directory. Um, these are Unix shell commands, right? If you're not familiar with these commands, you can just use your, you know, graphical file explorer, right? Um, and uh, yeah, the, the Windows commands will be different. If you're on Linux or Mac, you can just follow along. Okay, so let's create a new Git repository. So we'll make a directory and we'll enter the um, enter the directory right using cd right and then we'll use git in it okay so that's it lah. so now you have a empty git repository right um yeah it's empty there's nothing in it um, that's how you start a new repository um, locally lah, right it's possible for you to create a, a repository on github and then clone it before uh, clone it while it's empty right um, then you can directly add stuff to it. I mean, yeah, uh, there are two ways to do it, right? But this is the way to create a repository locally, right? You use git in it. Okay, so that's our first command. Okay, so now we are going to stage a file, right? Um, so how do you create a file? Uh, you, you can create a file using whatever method, right? Just make sure you're in the repository itself. Um, right. Uh, make sure you're in the repository itself. Then you can use whatever method you want, right? Uh, to create a file, right? You may use nano, or you can use your own editor, or you can just you know, uh, use a shell command to create a file, right? So once you have the file, right? What we want to do is to use git add. Right, git add will stage the file. Yeah, um, no, you don't need to set the editor before doing this step, as in this is independent. But when we do git commit, right, you will need the editor there, otherwise, git will complain. Uh, but actually, git will try to use some default. Yeah, um, okay, so. Uh, now we're going to do git add, right? And this will stage the file. So uh, now I'm going to illustrate what all this means again. So again, we have our, uh, um, oops. Um, yeah. Okay. So we have our three zones, right? As we mentioned earlier, so we have our working directory. Um, we have staging. These commands work on Windows, right? You th these commands, the git commands work on Windows, right? Um, you can't really, you may not. I think this, no, this won't work on Linux, uh, on Windows. But the git commands themselves, you can use it on. Uh, Windows, you need to use the git bash or git command line or whatever it is. Or you need to make sure that you have git 
uh, in your path. So again, we have our three areas, right? Uh, working directory, staging, and repository. So when we first created the repository, right? Um, all of these places are empty, of course, right? Um, so there's nothing there, right? Then we created a new file, right? So we created a new file, and then there'll be hello here, right? Um, then when we do git add hello, right? So we're going to do this, right? Git add hello. And git doesn't say anything, that means it succeeded, right? Uh, now if you look at git status, right? It says changes to be committed, new file, um, hello. So what does that mean? That means that um, now you have added hello to the staging area, right? And so now these two are equal. Yeah. So now the working area, working directory and the staging area or the index are equal, right? And the repository is empty. So um, how does Git know that uh, these files are to be committed? It does a comparison between the staging area and the repository, right? And okay, it sees that the repository does not have this file, therefore this file is going to be committed when you run the commit uh, command. Okay. So let's move on. So now we're going to check your status, which I already did, right? So you, you can do git status and git status is a useful command, right? Um, yeah, when you, basically when you don't know why, what, what's happening in the repository, just look at git status and it should tell you um, what's, uh, the situation, right? Whether you're in the middle of some, uh, in the middle of some process or something like that, or you know what uh, files are dirty, what files are going to be committed, and so on, right? Uh, Git status will tell you most of these things. Yeah. So again, as we can see, uh, we just staged hello, right? Um, so uh, changes to be committed, new file hello. And now um, we're going to look at git diff. Right. Uh, your, your, uh, your output may look slightly different. Right. Um, yours will probably look like that. Um, and the reason is that I am I am using this uh, sort of program called git delta. Right, which you can go and uh, install if you want. Right, uh, what it does it, is it is it sort of pretty prints uh, the diffs to look like this. Right, but um, I'm going to use. Uh, I will explain what these, how to read these diffs. Right, um, and then if you want, you can install this program to make them look uh, nicer, la. Okay. Um. So we, if you run git diff dash dash stage, right? What it what it's doing, right, is it's making a comparison between the staging and the repository, right? Uh, oops, sorry. Yeah, it's making a comparison between staging and the repository. Uh, the index, uh, it's making a comparison between the index and the repository, right? The, the current uh, commit that you are on, right? And it's telling you the difference between uh, the index and the current commit, right? Um, and so it tells you that, okay, you have created a new file, uh, hello, and in the file, the changes are you have added this line, right? Uh, which is exactly what uh, I have done, right? So that is what git diff stage does. And this is how you look at uh, the index or the staging area, right? What, what are the differences from the current commit? So this is how you see what you're going to commit. Okay. And finally, we can commit, right? So over here, we have a git commit, right? And then this, uh, this flag is a shorthand to specify the uh, message of the, the commit message, right? Uh, in case it's a short message, like you can just specify it directly on the command line, right? You can also leave it off, right? And let me show you what happens when you leave it off. So now I'm going to uh, do git commit and it will pull up my editor, right? Um, and ask me to type a message, right? Um, so I'm just going to type a message um, and I'll talk about, I'll talk a bit about uh, commit message discipline later on, right? But 
I'm going to type a message, right? Um, and just save the file. Then you exit. And once you exit, right? Um, then Git should have committed uh, or created a commit for you. Okay. So now, um, remember I was talking about the commit hashes and uh, hashes just now. So this is the commit hash, right? This is the hash of this uh, current commit that I have created. Yeah, and uh, so Git will refer to this commit using this hash, right? And this will uh, this will never change, right? This hash will always be this value, and it's kind of useful, like, because um, you just given the hash, you can, uh, and because the hash is tends to be unique uh, globally, right? Um, it, you it's quite rare to have a collision, so if you have a given uh, hash, right, you can sometimes just Google that hash and you can find the exact commit from the exact project, right? You don't even need to specify the project it's in. Uh, sometimes, not always. Because I think Google, Google doesn't really index the commit hash. Yeah. So again, you can leave the, you can leave, you can specify the message on the command line, right? Or you can leave it out and then uh, Git will uh, pull up the editor and then ask you to type in a commit message. Everyone okay so far? If you manage to create a comment. Yeah, use the um the reactions to um let me know please. All right, cool. <coughs> Great, okay, then let's move on. All right, so uh, now let's look at the commit that we have created, right? Um, so this is the command we're going to use. It's called git show, right? Um, and again, the, the output you see will be slightly different, right? Um, right, you'll probably see something like this. Um, yeah. So again, what does this show you? It shows you the current commit, right? So this is the commit hash. And what does this mean? Um, so what does head mean, right? Head is a special uh, pointer to the uh, current branch, right? Um, so head is what get, so whatever head is pointing to is the current branch, right? Um, and yeah, so master is the current branch. Uh, if you have a recently installed git, it may be main, right? Uh, yeah, so main or master, right? It's the current, it's the default uh, branch name, right? Um, yeah, so if you see head pointing to something, right? That, that means that this branch that is pointing to is the branch that you are currently on, right? And you can see this on the shell or on my shell prompt, right? Uh, yeah, and you can, you can get these using certain, um, shell uh, extensions or shell prompt things. So there's this thing called Starship. Right, uh, if, you're, if you're on Linux or Mac, you can check out this. Um, it basically lets you customize your prompt and display some things like this um, and other things like whether, you know, whatever you want to show actually, like that's, it can do a lot of things. Yeah. But anyway, that's, uh, that's besides a point. When you set a name, can we leave a space in between? Yes, yes. Uh, you can your 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 name and Git can have spaces. That's that's fine, right? Yes. So Git show. If you don't specify anything, if you just say Git show is only going to show you the latest commit, right? But it's possible to you know, Git show can show you anything you want to see, right? Um, and I will talk about um. I will talk about how you can uh, but later on when we have larger repositories, right? I will talk about what. Uh, or how you can see other things in the repository, right? Okay. So git show will show you the current commit. This is the commit hash. This is um, the author information. This is the date uh, that the, the, the commit was created, right? And then it will show you the diff uh, of the commit. And again, I want to emphasize, right? Um, 
this div is not what git stores, right? Uh, this div is computed uh, on the fly. So what is stored is the contents, actual file contents of that commit, right? And git will just compute the div uh, based on you know this commit and the previous commit. And it will do the different. It will compute the difference and then show you the div, right? And it's important to keep this in mind because uh, the behavior of some commands will make more sense if you remember that what Git is doing is storing the difference. Right? It's not storing the differences. Yeah, I mean, sorry, Git is storing the contents, right? It's not storing the differences. Okay, so that is Git show. So let's create another commit, right? Um, so let us, uh, yeah. So open your file, right? Um, you can change just change the file a bit. Right, so I'm just going to add an exclamation point. Uh, no, actually, let's change it to hello orbital. Right. So we change the file. Right. And again, use your own editor. Now you can use git diff and it will tell you the difference. Right. So you can. Uh, so this is what you will see. And again, um, this is the format of a diff. Right. So you deleted this line and you added this line. Right. Um, so that's what it means. And uh, sometimes you may see extra lines in between, uh, not, not in between, so you might see extra lines above or below and they are not, and if they don't have a, if they don't have a minus or plus before them, like the first character, if the first character is a space, that means that line is a context line, meaning that it wasn't changed, but um, it's just giving context uh, so that you know the the program applying this diff, right? Um, if you if you are using this diff uh, somewhere else, right, it can know where exactly uh, to apply that uh, you know these changes. Lah. So anyway, again, minus means this line was removed. Plus means this line was added, right? And space is a. If the first character is a space, that means it's a context line, right? And over here, uh, this. These numbers uh, indicate the uh, the line numbers of the change. So uh, the minus means that um, the original file right uh, started at line one, and um, for a larger diff, you might see a few more numbers, and that indicates the number of lines, right? And then the plus indicates the line number in the changed file, right? And then again, for a larger diff, right, uh, you will see some. Another number here indicating the number of lines or the end line of the um of the diff. Lah. Yeah. So that's how you read a diff. And yeah. Okay, so that is git diff, right? And okay, so let me go back to this three area um three area diagram thing. So what happens now, right? Um, so git diff. So just now we look at git diff dash s, right? And it showed you the difference between the index and the repository, right? Now we have made a commit. So hello is actually in the repository, right? Um, yeah, hello is in the repository. And so before we made a change to hello in the working directory, all of these are actually equal, right? And because they're equal, uh, both git and both git diff and diff dash s will show you the there are no changes right and then after that we made some changes to hello right so um, yeah there are changes to hello so hello was changed and now when we look at git diff now when we look at git diff it will not show you uh, as in it will now show you the differences between um, the working directory and staging right so again, we look at git diff, it will show you the changes between the working directory and the index, right? Um, and if you look at uh, git diff dash s, right? Um, what do we expect to see? You expect to see nothing because there is uh, the staging or the index and the repository or the commit. Uh, the index and the repository is still are still the same, right? So there are no differences between these two and therefore, yeah, you, you see no changes, right? It doesn't output anything. Okay. And now, yeah, so actually that's the end of this uh, first part, right? But so, um, let us create a new commit now, right? Um, 
And I just want to show you how, uh, I just want to re uh, go through again uh, how the your file contents and changes go through the three different areas in Git, right? So now uh, let's look at Git status. So again, Git status will now tell you, uh, no, now Git status will tell you that this file is modified, right? Um, so you can again add the file, right? And once you add the file, it's going to add the changed file to the staging area, right? It's going to add the changed file to the staging area, right? Um, now we look at Git status again. Then it will show you changes to be committed, right? So now it is in the staging area, right? So when we run git diff, right, uh, what will you expect to see? So now the staging area is also has the modified, uh, staging area also has a modified hello, right? So when you run git diff, you will expect to see. Let's just say in chat, anyone? Nothing, right? Because there is no difference now between the working directory and staging, right? So you expect to see nothing. And now when you ex when you when we look at git diff uh, dash s, uh, you can by the way, I'm just doing this so that you can uh, my output is the same as what you see, right? Uh, because I have uh, that uh, extra add-on installed. So now when I do git diff dash s, right, after staging the file, what would you expect to see? Right, so minus hello world plus hello orbital, right? Uh, whoops. That's strange. Hmm. Oh, yeah, my bad. Um. Yeah, I clearly. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the command is git diff dash dash staged, right? I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. So. You are, this is what you expect to see, right? Because this is the difference between the staging area and uh, let me correct this. Yeah. This is the area between, this is the difference between the staging area and the current commit, right? So this is what you expect to see, okay? Okay, uh, let us go to a summary. So this is what we have covered so far, right? Uh, in it, to initialize repository, git add to stage changes, right? Uh, git diff and git diff stage, right? Um, again, so git diff will look at the uh, differences between the working tree and the index. And, oh, and uh, if you do git diff dash dash staged, it will look at the difference between the index and the current commit, right? And then we have git status. Again, git status is a very useful command that you will use often because it just tells you what's going on in your repository. Like. Right, and then we have git commit, and then uh, we have git show, right? So, um, so let us, let me just commit this, these changes, and this time I'll use, uh, yeah, I'll do this, right? And then again, we can look at git show. So git show will now show the uh, current uh, changes, right? Um, I mean, it will show the current commit, right? And so how do you look at the, when you look at other things, you can just basically uh, specify it, right? Um, so I won't uh, I'll touch on that a bit later, but basically if you have a commit hash, you can look at the, you can specify the commit hash, right? And it will show you that uh, that commit, right? And you can actually specify other things as well. Um, but I will encourage you to look at the manual for that. Okay. Okay, so let me just, the, the reason that um, 
the reason that I was so uh, I I typed this right is because I actually I actually have an alias that does this right. Uh, this is not an actual Git command. This is just an alias, right? And you can look into how to configure uh, aliases in Git, right? Uh, and this this alias for me. Um, oh no, yeah, alias is not a command. It's actually just a configuration. Um, it's actually just a con uh, uh, something you specify in the Git configuration file, right? Uh, and you can create your own aliases, right? Uh, maybe I'll touch on that if there is time later on, right? Uh, some of the useful aliases that I have, uh, I, uh, that I use, right? Okay. Let's uh, move on. Everyone okay so far? Any questions? Let me clear the reactions. Let me clear the reactions. All right. Okay. Um, so how do we view our commit history, right? Um, use git log, right? L-O-G, that lets you view the log. And so now we should have two commits, right? After I created two commits, right? Um, and you should be able to see these two commits. Uh. So again, in the log, you see everything in the same format as you usually do, right? Commit, commit hash, author, date, right? And then the message, right? Um, and again, here you will see, uh, you know, the head. Uh, so this this means that the this branch is the current branch that you are on, and this commit is the commit that this branch is currently at, right? Yeah. And so we'll talk about this. We we'll talk about branching later as well. So this is how to view commit history, right? Um, and this is how you can look at. Uh, so then now. This is where git show comes in. So if you want to see, okay, what happened in this commit, you can copy this hash, then you type git show, right? And actually there are some shorthands you can use. So for example, if you want to look at the, if you want to look at the previous commit, so if you do git show head, right? Um, as you can see, head is pointing to master, which is pointing here. So if you do git show head, it will show you this commit, right? Um, and there's some other shorthands you can do. For example, if you want to look at um, the one commit before the hit, you can use the tilde and you specify that it will show you the one commit before hit, right? Um, and you can do this uh, for multiple commits. Lah. So you can do two. Of course, there's no such commit because there's only one commit before hit, right? Um, these are some of the shorthands. There are, there are other ways to specify a commit, right? And I will encourage you to look at the uh, manual pages because I don't have enough time to cover all of that. And most of the time you you won't need to uh you won't need that. Lah. Most of the time you're just looking at you you will look at the you'll find a commit in the log and then you want to look at that particular commit, right? Most of the time that's what you do. Or most of the time you just use GitHub to look at the history. Lah. Okay. Um, okay. Um ignoring files, right? Uh sometimes you don't want Git to track a certain file. Right. So I'm gonna create a file. So we're going to create a file and then we're going to go uh, git status. <clears throat> so in git status, you will see this file here, right? Um, and it's untracked, right? Uh, it's a new file. So suppose we don't want git to, uh, we don't want git to care about the file. You can add it to this special file called .gitignore. And if you add it to git ignore, now if you look at git status again, you will see that uh, ignore me is no longer uh, you know, tracked by git, uh, but it will, it will instead track git ignore. La. And you should commit uh, git ignore, la, of course. Yep. So that's how you ignore files, right? So now if you want to look at, um, if you want to look at the files that are ignored, you can actually do this. Um, git status dash dash ignored and it will tell you the files that are ignored, right? Um, so yeah. Um, so let us commit this. So you can see I can, uh, okay, so this is just adding the entire uh, 
this entire directory la, and I'm in, in the root of the repository. So I'm adding the entire repository, right? Um, so now we are adding a new file, la, right? And then I'm going to commit. Okay. I'm going to commit, right? And again, now you can see, um, yeah. So, now there are no dirty, there are no, you know, the repository is clean, right? Aside from these uh, ignored files, right? Uh, so that's how you ignore files uh, in Git. And now let's talk about why, why will you want to ignore files, right? Um, so you want to ignore files, things like uh, build artifacts, right? Um, you know, your node, uh, your node modules directory, um, your compiled code, etc., cetera, right? Uh, your binaries, all of these usually do not, commit, right? Um, you should not commit, right? Um, and you should put them in your git ignore so that, uh, you, you know, git will ignore those files, right? Um, yeah, please don't commit your node modules, right? A lot of orbital projects are web projects, right? And you'll have, you use node. Um, yeah, so please don't commit node modules into your repository. Um, there, there, there are very few situations in which you do that, right? Uh, if, yeah, most of the time you do not commit node modules into your repository. Right. Um, so these are the some of the files that you might want to ignore, right? Okay. And what is the format of Git ignore? Basically, it's just a list of um, a list of paths to ignore, right? Um, so there are, you can just specify a file name, right? Uh, or you can specify a full path, right? So if you specify slash, this is relative to the current directory. When I say current, I mean the directory in which uh, git ignore is in. La. And you can use globs, right? So this star means it matches any file, uh, any name, right? Um, yeah, it doesn't match a directory. So yeah. um, so it can only match within the directory any file um, ending in .log, right? That's what this does. Um, and you can specify like, um, if you want to match multiple directories, you can use star star. <laughs> Right, and so what does this match? Basically, it matches any file or directory named logs um, anywhere in the uh, repository. La. And this matches, um, you know, um, this matches uh, any file that is under a directory called logs, right? Anywhere in the repository, right? And this, um, this will match uh, any file that is under some directory that is under a directory called logs. Um, at the starting from the directory, this git ignore file is in. So you can have multiple git ignore files in a repository, right? And they will all take effect relative to the, you know, relative to the directory that they are in. La. Right. So um, yeah, you will rarely have to do that. La. But um, it's a it's mainly useful when you have multiple projects in a single git repository, right? Then you might want to have a single one git ignore file for each project, right? Because they will have different things to ignore and so on. Or you can just have one gig now file in the root of the direct of the repository, right? That's totally up to you, right? Uh, for more information about the pattern format, you can look at uh, the documentation, right? Um, okay, so that's getting no. Okay, so let's move on to branching and collaboration. Yeah, so uh, Noel has posted some uh, uh, templates for getting all right. So those templates will are based on the particular language or framework you're using, right? Because each you know, each uh, language and uh, sort of each tool set will have their own uh, files that are typically ignored, right? And so you can use those as a starting point uh, for your project. Yeah. Okay, so branches, right? Uh, what are branches? They are they let you sort of have multiple lines of development like, happen simultaneously, right? Um, and we have seen what uh, head means, right? Head, again, head points to, head is just a pointer, right? Uh, it's a special pointer, right? To the branch that you are currently on, right? And what is a branch in Git? A branch is just a name for a particular commit. That's it, right? Um, when, when you talk about, what what a branch what this branch name means to git, um, it's just uh some name that is pointing to a particular commit. Right, so um, let's say we have a. Let's say we create a new commit um over here, right? 
Um, so the hash is uh, X, Y, Z, right? Um, when you actually create a new commit, right? Uh, what does Git do? All it's just doing is creating that new commit that points to this commit as the parent, right? And then it's just making must, it's just shifting this pointer to point to here now. That's all, that's all you're doing when you create a new commit, right? Um, yeah, so that's how, that's how branching works in Git, right? Um, and you can have, of course, you can have multiple branches point to the same commit, right? Uh, so you can do this, uh, testing and master as well, right? Right, so you can have multiple branches point to the same commit, right? Um, yeah. Again, because uh, a branch is effectively just a pointer to a commit, right? Um, and so yeah, you can do a lot of things with uh, branches in Git, right? Um, okay. So how do you create a branch in Git, right? Um, there are a few ways. So the first way that uh, I will use is this, right? Uh, git checkout dash b, right? And uh, how do you, so uh, dash b means to create a new branch with, uh, yeah, the this name. La. So uh, I'm going to name it this. And uh, yeah, actually there is an implicit argument here that I'm leaving out, right? And yeah. Um, Checkout means to check out a, a branch. Uh, yeah, that's the old term, right? Uh, this is actually an older command, uh, but you know, a lot of uh, Git guides and whatnot will still use this command. That's why I'm using this command rather than the newer command, which is called git switch. So you can also use git switch, right? Um, and it will switch branches for you. Right, uh, you can also check out. The uh, but I would say checkout is a slightly more overloaded command, right? Uh, but again, I'm the reason I'm teaching checkout instead of switch uh, is because checkout is still uh, switch is still quite new, and most of the you know whatever guides you see online, they probably still use git checkout. Right? So I think it's good for you to know both of these. Um, yeah, just in case you see uh, just but you only need to be familiar with one of them, of course. Um, just know that these exist, right? So checkout just means to check out a branch, right? Um, that's the term. Of course, now they have sort of switched to the term switched instead of checkout. So what does checkout dash B new feature mean, right? We are checking out a new branch. So checkout dash B new feature means create a new branch called new feature, right? Based on the current commit that you are on and switch to that branch. That's what this command means, right? Uh, so it will create a new branch based on the current commit you are on, which in this case, I was on master, right? Um, and therefore I created a new branch uh, called new feature that is pointing to the same commit as master, right? And I switched to that branch, right? So if you want to create a new branch without switching to it, right? You can just um, use git branch and the name of the, you do, you do this, it will create a new branch, right? And it doesn't say anything. But now if you if you use, um, I mentioned this? Yeah, I do mention it. So if you just use git branch without any uh, other arguments, right? It will list all the branches for you that you have in your local repository, right? And you will see the new branch that is created, right? So that's the other way to create a, that's the other way to create a new branch, right? You just use git branch. Okay, so if you forget, if you want to create a branch on a previous version, right? Uh, the way that I prefer to do it is this. Um, so let's get a commit hash, right? So let's say I want to have a branch pointing to this, right? Um, what you can do is git checkout dash b, old version, and you specify a argument after that, right? Uh, and it's going to create a new branch that is pointing to this commit, right? Um, going to create a new branch pointing to this commit, right? And switch to it, right? And now, 
Now, if I do git log dash dash all, right? Now I specify dash dash all in order to see all commits, right? If not, I'll only see, um, I'll only see the current branch, right? So if I do git log dash dash all, you can see um, I have three branches here pointing to this commit, right? And then I have one branch pointing to this commit, and then my head is pointing to this branch. And I think you can actually do the same with um, uh, git branch, right? Yeah, there you go. So you can do the same with git branch. So again, if I want to create a new branch on this commit, uh, let, me, let me switch back to master, okay? So again, now I'm back on master, right? Um, and I want to create a new branch on uh, this commit, right? I can just do this. And if you now do git log, I now have another branch pointing to this commit. Um, and as I said just now, you know, um, branches are just pointers to a commit. So if you want to specify a commit as a branch name, you can just do that as well. And now you have three commits, uh, three branches pointing to this commit. Right. So that's um, how you create a branch in Git. Right. right. So what we have, we have a few commits here. And then we had or, uh, we originally had master pointing to this commit, right? And now we created a new branch uh, called uh, new feature, and it's also pointing to the same commit, right? And then you can uh, list branches again using git branch uh, without any arguments, right? And now we have way too many branches. Um, so how do you delete branches? Um, let me, yeah, so, so yeah, this is how you list branches, right? Um, and so you should have two or maybe more if you created more, right? Um, how do you change branches? Again, you use git checkout or you use git switch, right? Um, these are, git switch is a newer command, right? Um, and it sort of uh, splits up checkout. And the reason they split it up is because, uh, oh, the reason I say split is because checkout actually does a second feature, or does a second action, right? Which uh, I haven't touched on, right? Um, and yeah, so it actually did multiple things. And so they wanted to improve the user interface a bit. Like, so they uh, split up the checkout command into two commands. And the other command is called restore. Okay. Yeah, so when you use switch or use checkout, right? Um, what checkout or switch does is actually point, just change the pointer of head, right? Uh, change where head is pointing to. Because that's what you do, that, that, that head points to the current branch, right? Uh, or head is the pointer to the current branch. Uh, so when you use checkout or switch, you are changing the head pointer right, to whatever branch you specify, all right? Or it's even possible to check out a particular commit, right? And Git will complain uh, because it's not very good to, yes, when you commit after switching, you will commit to the new branch, right? So again, I say it's possible to be on a, it's possible for you to check out a particular commit, right? Um, yeah, it's possible for you to check out a particular commit and then now you'll see that your head is pointing to, um, this commit, right? And it's not on a branch. Right? And so there is a difference, right? If I check out, um, if I check out this commit, right? Even though master is pointing to this commit, right? Um, I'm not on master, I'm just on this particular commit, right? And it is possible, right? To um, now I can, I can now create a new commit, right? Um, and if I do that, right, it's going to create a new commit, uh, and I will my head will then point to that new commit. But these two branches are not going to be updated to that new commit, right? So uh, I hope this sort of makes sense in the model that you have of Git, right? Uh, based on what I have said. So head is just a pointer to the current uh, branch or even the current commit, right? And if your head is pointing to a commit, then uh, Git will complain, right, and say that your in detached head state, right? It means that your head is not pointing to a branch line, it's pointing to a commit, 
right? Uh, right, and you can do anything while you're in detached head state. It's just that uh, whatever you do in this state, um, unless you save it to a branch, right? It's not, uh, you know, unless you create a branch pointing to that, you will, you know, whatever you do will just be left as commits, right, in the repository. Uh, they are not being pointed to, right? And basically commits, they are, and these are what we call dangling commits right? because nothing is pointing to them. And therefore, uh, after some time, Git, Git will clean them up, right? So um, you should not be in detached head mode. Anyway, that was a bit of digression. Okay, so let us talk about merging, right? Um, so let me switch back to uh, the new feature branch. Okay. And I'm going to create a file. So, so now I have a file here called by, right? And I'm going to commit that file. So you can just actually copy the commands, right? Um, at this point. Right? So we add the file again and then we commit it. And so what commit have we created? Um, yeah, this commit. So we added a new file, right? And um, so master is now on the previous commit, right? Because we created a new commit on this branch. And uh, what we're going to do now is to, uh, so this is how the graph looks like uh, right, right now, right? So we have a few commits, right? And then master points to this commit. And then we created a new branch, new feature that was originally uh, here, right? On the same commit. And now, um, now it's on the new commit, right? And master is still pointing to the old commit, right? Uh, that's what we have now. So uh, what we want to do is to merge new feature into master, right? Merge, right? Um, there isn't much there, but you see that um, what we can do is actually just fast forward master, right? <coughs> what you can do is just fast forward master to point to this commit and then once we do that, we have sort of merged uh, master, a new feature into master, right? So let's again check out to check out master. And I need to change my git configuration because I have some settings that prevent me from, uh, I don't know, actually this is fine. Yeah. Uh, so now if I just type uh, git merge, it's going to say fast forward, right? Uh, because it is just a fast forward merge. So why is a fast forward merge? Basically, uh, when we can do this, it's a fast forward merge, right? So we just fast forward it master to point to new feature, right? And you can only do this when the branch that you are merging, right? Um, the branch that you're merging in is a uh, descendant, is pointing to a descendant of the branch that you are merging into, right? Uh, then you can do a fast forward merge. So this is in a simple case like when you have one older branch that you know has some commits. Uh, when you have one older branch and then you have some new commits on top of that branch, right? Then you can do a fast forward merge. Yeah. So now, uh, yeah, we can delete the branch, right? Um, and so let's delete the branch. And just now you can see I use dash capital D, right? So what's the difference between this and a capital? Um, Basically, if you use the capital, then it will allow you to delete a branch that has not been merged, right? Mm. If you use this, it will only allow you to delete the branch if it has been merged, right? So um, it's better to just use this, right? Um, unless you know that uh, you want to delete the branch even if it's not merged. Okay. Okay, so okay, so now um, I've talked about fast forward merging. So now let's talk about non fast forward merging, right? Um, but before that, let us talk about how to clone a repository, All right? So you should go to uh, the merge conflict repository. It's linked uh, here, right? But I'm going to copy the link and paste it in the chat, right? So.
right? Your Git may look slightly different, right? Depending on what team you have um, enabled. Um, and I also have a different add-on. So your UI might, um, actually I should just disable the add-on, okay? Uh, give me a second. Okay, right. So this is what you should see, right? Um, it might differ slightly depending on the team you have. Um, so you want to clone the repository, what you do is you go to um, this here and then you can, uh, you know, you get the URL to clone. <coughs> right, and uh, in order to clone, you can use um, HTTPS or SSH, right? Um, if you're on Linux or Mac, I recommend using SSH, right? Um, if you're on Windows, you can use HTTPS with uh, the Git Credential, Git, sorry, Git Credential Manager. Right. Um, if not, you have to keep keying in your username and password, and that's kind of annoying. Okay, so I'm going to use SSH, right? Um, it doesn't really matter what you use. Uh, it just the uh, whatever you use, just uh, it just affects like uh, what exactly you know um, the the way that you authenticate, like whether you use SSH, um, an SSH key or a um, use it or your GitHub username and password. So, how do we clone a repository? You just use the URL, right? So you do git clone and then the URL that you copy from the um here. So I'm going to use SSH, uh, I'm going to use SSH, but it's really up to you what you want to use. So before you clone, right, uh, leave the Git repository, right? You shouldn't have uh try to avoid having Git repositories in Git repositories, right? Uh, it leads a bit of yeah, it shouldn't be should, it's not a problem, it's just a bit messy, I guess. So I'm going to clone that, and right. So once you clone that, you should be able to uh, enter the repository, right? And then um, yeah. So now the first thing that I want to do is actually to uh, basically check out all the branches. Um, that are on the <coughs> that exist in the repository. So I'm going to check out conflict one and conflict two, right? Um, these two branches exist uh, on the remote, right? Um, and then we want to go back to master. Okay, so do that first. So check out uh, conflict one and conflict two, then go back to master, right? And so this is the setup that we have, right? Uh, basically, I have. Uh, I have uh, this master commit, right? Uh, master is pointing to this uh, parent commit, and then we have two branches that are sort of, you know, uh, descendants of this same commit, right? And they both change the same, you know, same file and same line, the same file. And therefore, when you try to merge them, you can't automatically merge them. Lah, so it will result in a merge conflict, <coughs> right? And um, you can use this command, right, to sort of see a graphical uh, view, right, um, sort of graphical view uh, of the commit graph, right? And again, you know, um, as I mentioned at the start, right, the commit history will form a graph, right? Uh, to be specific, it's a directed acyclic graph, right? Um, so, um, yeah. And... Uh, You can use actually, where is my, yeah, there are some graphical tools that you can use to uh, visualize history. So if, you know, if this command line history is not good enough, you can just open up uh, Git GUI. I'm not sure if this works on Windows, right? Uh, but yeah, on Windows and Mac, it should work. Uh, then you should be able to, um, yeah, view the history la, right? and maybe useful. But uh, most of the time, most of the time I just do this, right? Uh, using git log graph, right? And we want dash dash all in order to see these two commits. Otherwise, 
you know, if we don't specify dash dash all, we're just going to see this particular commit because um, it will show only the commits that are on the current branch. Okay, so now uh, let's try to merge in both branches uh, into master, right? Um, so you merge conflict one, that one should fast forward, right? Because, uh, you know, uh, because commit one is a direct descendant of commit uh, of master, sorry, conflict one is a direct descendant of master, so it should be able to fast forward, right? Um, now, if you try to merge conflict two, what's going to happen? You get a merge conflict, right? Because um, if you actually look at the changes, right, they modify the same line in the same file. So uh, what happens when you have a merge conflict, right? First thing you should do, uh, look at git status, right? So whenever you don't know what to do, look at git status and it'll tell you what to do, right? So what is, what is our situation now? We have unmerged paths, right? So fix the conflicts and then run git commit, right? That's what it's telling us to do. And if we want to abort, we can do that, git merge abort. So now let's, uh, how do we fix commits? Basically, uh, you open up the file, right? And basically at the area you have the conflict, you will have these conflict markers, right? Uh, so what do these, uh, sorry, what do these conflict markers mean, right? Um, basically you have uh, this, you, will, you, you can search for these conflict markers by looking for seven, um, seven less than in a row, right? Usually you won't see that anywhere else, right? So that's a conflict marker. And basically what this means is, uh, this is what was in our current branch, right? Um, goodbye, right? And this is what was in the branch that we are merging in, right? Uh, farewell, right? So head is the current branch, conflict two is the branch that we are merging in. And these are the contents in between them. So how do you fix a conflict? Basically, you just look at the two, um, you know, you look at the two, what do you call it? You, you look at the two contents, right? And then you decide which one, uh, you, you sort of merge them manually. Lah. So this is a bit of a contrived example, right? But if you had code, then you might look at the two chunks of code and then you have to sort of um, merge them, you know, and make them work, lah, right? Um, I mean, merge them as in like, make sure that both of the functionalities of the, you know, the code is sort of merged into the uh, resulting, you know, merged, uh, merged file, right? So in this case, I'm just going to resolve the conflict by, you know, yeah, so that's what I said, right? So I'm going to just merge the conflict by just choosing a uh, farewell, okay? So we'll, re we'll resolve the conflict in this way, right? So once you have resolved the conflict, you make sure to remove the conflict markers, right? Uh, otherwise, you're going to commit that into the repository. So once you have uh, merged the, yeah, once you have resolved the conflict, just do git add, right? Uh, see, it tells you here, use git add to mark resolution. So we do git add and then again, yeah. Now it will tell you all conflicts, uh, yeah, all conflicts fixed, but you are still merging, right? So to com complete the merge, we will do git commit, right? And then it will tell us, and it will generate us a commit message, right? Saying merge branch, blah, 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 right? And it also tell you that the conflicts that you had, right? Um, yeah, so on. So then you can just, you, you can change the commit message if you want, or you can just leave the default uh, commit message, right? Um, so now we have merged the branch, right? And you can see that um, this is a merge commit. It tells you so, right? Um, if you look at git log, it tells you that this is a merge commit and then this commit has two parents, right? Um, so this parent, yeah. So it has two parents. One of them is this one. One of them is this one, right? Um, and if you want to look at the graph structure that we have now, this is what we have. So this was the original commit on master. Then we have conflict one and conflict two, right? And then we have um, the new master commit, which is a merge commit, right? Uh, so this merge commit has, <clears throat> has some new information, right? Uh, and therefore it's a new commit, right? And this commit has two parents because it's a merge commit, right? Uh, and it's possible to have commits with multiple parents, right? Uh, not just two. Um, although most of the time you just see two. Lah. So this is what we call a merge commit. 
So um, a lot of people don't like merge commits, right? Because they feel like it makes the history ugly and they prefer to have a linear history, meaning that everything, uh, yeah, they prefer to have a linear history. La. So um, yeah, it depends on the particular project that you are working in. Okay, um, everyone okay so far? Have you managed to clone the repository and then, um, uh, you know, uh, merge, do the mergers and so on? Okay, great. Yes, what I did just now is to merge in conflict one, right? And that will succeed, right? And then I merge conflict two, right? Uh, and that will uh, result into, no, we are not merging conflict one into conflict two, right? We are doing all operations on master. So first we do, we merge conflict one um, into master. And then secondly, we merge conflict two into master, right? Uh, it's possible to merge you can also try to merge conflict two into conflict one, right? And that will still result in a merge conflict. <coughs> and in fact, you will end up with the same exact structure, right? Um, yeah. What do you mean why is there a merge conflict? Because the, the, the two commits modify the same files, right? So if you actually look at the changes, right? Um, If you actually look at the changes, right? Um, or conflict one is changing this line, and, and, and conflict two is also changing this line. And therefore, there is so much conflict. I, I, yeah, I, but I didn't do any mergers uh, at that point. You only get you get a merge conflict when you try to merge uh, two commits, right? Uh, that are changing the same lines in the same file, right? And Git cannot automatically, you know, uh, resolve those conflicts or do the merging. It cannot automatically merge it because it doesn't know uh, what line to use, right? So it, it result that, that that results in a conflict, la. If you're not merging, then there won't be any conflict, right? Um, you can get a conflict if you are applying a patch, right? Uh, basically what you're doing when you're merging is you're trying to apply the differences in one particular branch, right? Um, onto your current branch, right? So you have this structure, right? Um, and when we merge, when we merge conflict one into master, what we want to do is basically we want to take these changes, right? And apply them on top of master, right? Um, and so the, the easiest way to do that is a fast forward merge, right? That's what we do. So after you merge conflict one into master, you end up with this, right? So once you merge master into conflict one, you end up with this structure, right? Where basically master has been fast forwarded to point to this commit. And now you want to merge in conflict two, what you are doing is you want to take these changes, right? And put them on top of your current commit, right? Um, and if you try to apply these changes onto here, um, because what Git will look at is it will look at the what Git does is it will look at the <coughs> it will look at the 
it will find the ancestor, the common ancestor between these commits, right? So you are trying, you are currently merging conflict two into master, right? So it, Git will look for the um, common ancestor between uh, these two commits, right? Which is this commit, right? And then it will look for all the changes in this branch, right? So in this branch, all the changes, and then you'll try to apply them on top of your current branch, right? That's what a merge is doing, right? Um, and therefore, if there are changes that were made in uh, in both here and here, right? Then that will result in a conflict, right? So th that's how merging, th that's what you're doing when you're merging. Does it compare line by line? So if in your original file, you have two empty lines between A and B and you delete one empty line, will there be merge conflict uh, since all the lines in B now are shifted up by one line? Um, let me see. So, two empty lines between A and B, then you delete one empty line, but what are you merging? So, so you have one branch where the line is there and one branch where the line when where you have deleted the empty line. And then what other is that the only change or you have other changes? Um if you if that's the only change, uh that so that means that you have so what is the history like? Like is it uh, so so what I mean is like if you delete one line, right? If git compares line by line, right? Then the line 25, say line 25 in B is the original line 26, right? And if you compare these two lines, obviously the content of these two lines will be different mm -hmm. right, at line 25. So we call a merge conflict. But why are you merging? Um, A and B to the same branch. So you have, um, you have master, right? Yeah. So and then you have A and you have some uh, yeah, master, yes. master and A are the same thing. Oh, so, yeah. so A so is I, pointing to master. But yeah. no, but you have to see whether so then where is B where is B descended from? Like B is B descended from a uh, an ancestor or what? Okay, or, okay. So for, for simplicity, I say like if I delete one line, one empty line from master, and I delete two empty lines from master. Okay, the one okay. where I delete one empty line is A and the one where I delete yes, two that empty will, lines is B. That will result in a conflict because there is no way to resolve that. Do you want to delete one empty line or do you want to delete two empty lines, right? Also, also it will kind of compare line by line uh, since on the same lines. It, it, it more or less is a line by line comparison but it's slightly more smart than, smarter than that. But the problem is there is still there is no way to resolve that, right? Automatically because it, if in A you deleted minus one line and in B you deleted two lines, right? Then you now you want to now you have merged A into master, right? So now master is pointing here. Now you want to merge B into that, right? It's going to look at the ancestor commit and in the so the differences between uh, master and A is that you have deleted one line. And now you want to merge B into onto on top of this, right? It doesn't, it's not going to know it, there's no way for it to automatically resolve that. So that will result in a merge conflict. Yes. Oh also that means like if me and my partner are working on something, then I just feel like uh, maybe the, the organization it just doesn't look nice and I just create one new empty line. So when she, uh, when my partner tries to merge, there's possibility there's, that there's no change in actual content, but there will still be merge conflict. Uh. Um, if, if you change, if your partner changed the lines around that, uh, if the, your partner changed the line at that point, right, um, then it may result in a merge conflict. If, if your partner did not change the lines at that point, then it should be fine. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay, let's move on. Yeah. So you can see here we have our... Okay, wait, where was I? Yeah. So this is what we have after merging the... Um, yeah, the two, you know, uh, branches into master, right? And we have our merge commit here. Okay, so let's look at how to create a new GitHub repository, right? So, um, so 
So if you want to create a new GitHub repository, you go to the uh, main page, right? And at the main page, you have this, uh, at the top left, you can find this new button, right? And at the new button, you, you once you click the new button, right? You can uh, yeah, create a new repository, right? Um, right? Uh, then once you actually create, so you can make it public or private, right? Uh, that's up to you. Uh, now you can click uh, create repository, right? And you should get to this page. So now once you get to this page, basically it is telling you that this, when you see this page, it means that the repository is empty, right? Um, so what we want to do is to, uh, What we want to do is to push this uh, repository that we were working on. Right. Oh, actually, you can push anything. Uh. Right. So um, over here, what I have is uh, over here, what I have is uh, I'm creating a new repository and then I'm just creating some commits to it. Right. Um, yeah. And so uh, to answer the question just now, what this does is it read echo hello world, just prints hello world. Right. And this actually redirects the output to a file, right? So I'm printing, uh, just basically writing hello world to a file. Uh. That, that's what this line does, right? Um, yeah, then I'm adding hello and then I commit it, right? Um, so I'm just creating a new repository. So it doesn't matter what you do here. Uh, so the important part is here, right? Um, and we are adding the new remote, right? Uh, a remote is basically a remote repository where you can push, uh, you know, push to, right? Um, so basically what you want to do is to do this, right? Do add the remote, right? And, and again, um, over here, you can switch between um, HTTPS and SSH. And again, it uh, up to you what you want to use, right? So you add the remote. And then once you do that, um, you, you can ignore this line, right? This dash M is to rename a branch, right? Um, so once you do that, uh, you can uh, push, right? So, and once you have pushed, you should be able to, uh, yeah, see the contents of whatever repository that you pushed. So that's how to create a new repository in uh, Git, right? Um, so this is assuming that uh, you have you this that what this does is you uh, do you create a new repository uh, locally first, right? Um, and then you you know, uh, you add some stuff to that repository and then you push, uh, push it to the new remote on GitHub, right? It's also possible for you to just, you know, uh, create a new repository, right? And instead of using uh, Git in it, what you do is you just clone the empty repository and then you start working in the empty repository and then you can push uh, directly as well, right? Um, right? In that case, you would just use, if you were to do that, right? Then you can just use Git push uh, without, you know, specifying all these, right? So the first time that you, so what this dash u does, right? It's, it will set up this local master, uh, it will set up the local master branch to sort of track the remote master branch, right? And once you do that, it will be possible for you to just type git push and git pull, um, yeah, without any other, without specifying exactly where to push or pull from, right? Uh, because git will know uh, it will by default just pull or push to the tracking branch. Okay. Right. Yeah. So how do you update the repository? Right. You just do uh, git pull. Right. And it will tell you uh, already up to date like, because you didn't make any changes. Uh, yeah. So if you so if you did this again. If you this if you specify dash u, that means it's going to set up the branch, your local branch, to track the remote branch, right? And once you do that, you can just specify git pull, right? Otherwise, you can also specify uh, where to pull from and the branch to pull from, right? Um, so origin is the remote, right? Um, and master is the branch on the remote, uh, and that will pull it into the uh, local branch. And when you when you pull right, um, what it does is actually it does a git fetch right. That fetch is what uh basically downloading the uh 
um, fetch basically downloads the particular branch into your local um, into your local repository and it uh, downloads it into this special uh, name called fetch hit, right? And then it tries to merge that uh, fetch hit into your uh, current branch, right? That's what pull does. So pull is actually pull is equivalent to fetch and then merge. And so what they mean what this means is that if the remote branch uh, that you're pulling from has some changes, right? Uh, when you pull, you are going to it's going to try and merge, and then you yeah you might end up creating a merge com commit, or you might end up with merge conflicts that you have to fix, right? Um, yeah, so that's what pull is, right? And the other option is you can do update with rebase, right? Um, so what is rebase? Uh, rebase is another way of merging branches, right? Uh, so instead of uh, so suppose we have this commit history, right? Um, I believe there is a way. So, so is there a way to merge the fixed com merge commit by choosing which commit instead of editing the file directly? Uh, I I believe there might be, right? But I will not recommend doing that, right? Because basically you're going to override all the other changes in the opposing branch, right? And I'm not sure, most of the time we don't want to do that. Because when you say choosing which commit, meaning that you want to prefer the changes of one commit over another, right? Uh, and if you do that, you're, you're going to override all the changes in the other branch. So I'm not sure that you want to do that most of the time, right? I, I can see that, I can imagine some scenarios where, yeah, maybe you want to do that, but I, yeah, so I'm not sure if this exists actually, because it doesn't seem like a very common thing to you that you will want to do. Yeah. Okay. So let me talk about rebase. So what is rebase, right? When you do a normal, uh, when you do a merge in this scenario, you're going to end up with a merge commit, right? Um, but some people do not like uh, merge commits. So what you can do, right? Instead of having a merge commit, is to make a copy of this, uh, you separately apply these uh, changes on top of this branch. And then you basically just rebase. Uh, so what you're doing is just sort of copying this and sort of moving it here. So you get a sort of, you sort of rebase this commit on top of this commit, right? That's where the name comes, uh, comes from, rebase, right? Um, so you can do that and uh, basically, instead of having a uh, merge commit, you will just you know, uh, rebase your local changes on top of the new uh, remote branch, right? Um, that's what a rebase, the, uh, update, that's what pull rebase does, right? And rebase is actually itself a separate command. Um, can't remember if I actually cover it in this workshop. Yes, I actually do. And I suspect I won't have enough time to cover it. So this is the difference again between a rebase and merge, right? So suppose this is our, this is a remote. This is the local, right? Um, you can uh, merge the local. Yeah, you can merge the local. Uh, sorry, this is the remote, this is the local, right? And basically if you were to uh, just do a normal pull, right? You are going to end up with this merge commit on your local branch, right? Um, if you were to do a rebase, right? Basically what it does is just takes this these changes and applies them on top of the remote, right? And then you get a linear history, right? Yeah. So rebase versus merge. Okay. Um, HTTPS versus SSH, yeah. So I mentioned this earlier. So if you are... Uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter if you're using, if you have a SSH key set up with GitHub, um, then you should use SSH, otherwise you can just use HTTPS, right? Um, if you're on Linux or Mac, I would prefer SSH key. If you're on Windows, I would still encourage you to set up this, but it's a bit more difficult. So you can just use HTTPS with the Git credential manager, right? And that will, that will let you avoid uh, having to keep, you know, uh, keying your username and password. Okay, um, so the okay, so 
Uh, the last part is uh, last part that I'm going to cover uh, in the workshop proper, right? Um, is uh, forking and pull requests, right? Um, there are some extra parts that I think you can try and uh, try on your own, and if you need any help, uh, please, uh, you can ask me in in uh, MS Teams, right? Um, yeah. So, forking and PR. So, uh, let's just let's first clone this repository, right? Um, and again, the link I will just paste it in the chat. So we clone the repository, right? Um, and then, so uh, we're going to simulate the scenario where we are making, you know, some improvements to some project, right? Um, so go into that repository that you have just, uh, you know, forked, right? And make some improvements. So um, yeah, I'm going to make some improvement, right? Um, sorry for my lack of imagination, and then. Um, Right. So now I have made some uh, improvements to the, you know, the, the project, right? And uh, made the commit. So now I want to contribute it back by making a pull request. So how do I do that? Um, so basically this is, I'm assuming that you, you, you clone the repository before you forked it, right? Um, but it's also possible for you to fork first and then you just clone your fork, right? And then you can sort of skip some of the steps here, right? So uh, how do you do this? Uh, so you can try out, try this out, right? So you can create a fork. Uh, so you click fork, right? Uh, and then you know if you have, if you're in any organizations, then you will see uh, Git will ask GitHub will ask you which uh, where you want to fork it to la. You should just pick your local user, right? So once it's done, you should have a fork, right? Um, then what you want to do is to copy this URL of your fork, right? Um, and we're going to add a new remote, right? Yeah, so you can see here it has been forked from the original repository, right? Um, right, and then basically, yeah. So one of the things you want to do uh, before you actually create a pull request is to make sure that you are up to date, lah. Um, so you do a git pull, make sure you're up to date. Okay. So git will complain about this. Um, basically, it's telling you whether you want to prefer rebase or fast forward, right? Um, and you can just choose the option. Lah. For me, I prefer fast forward only, right? Um, so I actually set this. Um, yeah, so you can do this. Okay, so now what we want to do is to add the remote, right? Um, again, you get your, get the URL for your fork, right? And then add the remote. So what you want to do is do git remote add so this is the name of the new remote, right? This is the name of the new remote and I'm going to just paste the URL in, right? Um, so now I have created a new remote and what I can do is to just push. So when you're not pushing to the tracking branch, right? Uh, so when you first clone a repository, Git will actually uh, set it up to track that uh, repository that you clone from, right? So in this case, that's going to be the upstream repository, right? And you want to push to your fork. So what you want to do is to push, specify the remote, right? And specify the branch name that you want to push to, right? Uh, you may want to create a, you, you may want to push to a particular branch instead. And then in that case, what you can do is a branch, right? Um, right? You can do something like that, right? So this is a full syntax of push, right, actually. This is a full syntax of a push, right? And you can see here it is, um, yeah. What this means is this is a local branch uh, or local commit that you want to push. And this is the, the remote uh, branch that you want to push to, right? Uh, so this is a full syntax. So um, it's kind of good practice to, you know, create a separate branch for each pull request. But if you don't see yourself uh, creating multiple pull requests, then you can just push directly to master la, of your fork. What is the difference between a branch and a fork? Uh, very little actually, because of the way Git works, right? Branches uh, and and so sort of, and forks are just you know, uh, a, a fork is okay. A fork is a copy of the repository, right? Um, and within the repository, you can have you know multiple branches, right? Um, but each branch, all of the branches in all of the forks are sort of, you, you know, you can just merge. You can just 
uh, when you are, if you want, you can just take someone else's branch, pull it into your local repository, right? And merge it into your local, uh, you know, your, your own branch and then push it to your fork and so on. So, um, yeah. So the difference is that a branch is a branch, right? A fork is a copy of entire repository, right? Um, in, that means that it copies all of the branches to your own and then you can make changes to, you know, uh, you, you, you can work on any of the branches in, in that fork. Lah. And then you can make a pull request. Yeah. And then you can make a pull request between any two branches uh, in any, you know, any forks. Right. So um, that's the cool thing about GitLab, right? You can you can pull requests from so if you have a fork, you can pull requests from your fork, any branch on your fork to any branch on uh, another another fork or you know the upstream or whatever, right? And you can even pull requests between branches on in the same repository. So the difference is that a fork is a copy of the entire repository. Like branch is a branch. Okay. Um, so once you have pushed, right, you should now be able to go back to your repository here. Um, yeah, you should be able to go back to your repository here and then you can, uh, you will see that it says this branch is one commit ahead uh, of this, right? Then you can go to the contribute uh, button and then you can click uh, open pull request, right? Um, then after that, it will show you the changes that you have made, uh, you know, then you can just create a pull request, right? And this is where you can select, right? Um, you can, this is where you can select the, you know, uh, repository and the branch that you want to pull request to, right? Um, yeah. So indeed, you can pull request between any branches. So um, I'm now I'm making a pull request to uh, Yiching, uh, Yiching's fork, right? Or I can make a pull request to the upstream, right? And I can choose if there were more branches here, I could just you know, I could uh, what do you call that? I could choose to pull request to that particular branch instead of master, right? Um, and what this means is that when the the pull request is going to compare, yeah, it's just going to compare the branch that you specify here to your branch line. When uh, when the upstream decides to merge your branch, it will merge it to whatever branch that you specify. And actually, the upstream can also change the branch. I mean, the maintainers of this repository can change the branch that uh, in the pull request lah. So uh, feel free to create the pull request, right? Um, you'll see here, this is the title of the pull request, right? Um, which it may be different from your, maybe different from the commit. Lah. But if you only have a single commit, then uh, Git will just, or GitHub rather, will just take the title of the first commit. Yeah. So feel free to create a pull request. I'm not going to do that, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so last thing, uh, commit message discipline, right? Um, so there is a somewhat of a convention as to how you should write commit messages, right? Uh, the first line should be written, uh, should be a short uh, title of the commit, right? So a summary of what is in the commit, what the commit does, right? And you should phrase it imperatively, right? Uh, meaning that uh, exactly in this, this format, so change something or fix something, um, you know, add something, delete something, uh, you know, whatever, right? Revert something, uh, you know. Uh, so the first word is a verb, right? Um, imperative, in the imperative form. So it's in the, uh, yeah, just, just like that. Uh. Um, so don't, uh, if you are following this convention, you should avoid, uh, you know, like, um, avoid things like changes greeting, no? You should not do that or changed, right? You, it's not, past tense, you need to phrase it imperatively. So like change greeting from this step, right? Uh, and then after that, um, if you have a complex change, you might want to elaborate a bit on the change. Uh, after that, then you can write some paragraphs uh, to uh, elaborate on the change, right? So um, what does a real comment message look like, right? Um, yeah, you can look at uh, what the, you can look at a real comment message from the Linux kernel, right? As you know, um, as you may know, right? Uh, Git was initially created to serve as the uh, version control system for the Linux kernel, right? Um, and this is how they write their commit messages, right? So you can see here, they have some prefixes to de uh, denote uh, which part of the project that uh, the commit is relating to, right? And then here you can see uh, the commit message is imperative. So handle something, something, right? And then here they will elaborate on the change, right? And then at the bottom here, they will sign off and say who uh, wrote the commit and so on. 
So that's how a real commit message looks like. Yeah. yeah, so you can create pull requests between uh, branches in the same repository, right? So I've already mentioned this. Yeah. Okay, so this is what we have covered. Uh, Git log, check out merge, clone, uh, remote, right? Uh, push and pull. Okay. Um, yeah, so I am going to, that's the end of the workshop proper, right? Um, there is some extra. You can go and read, uh, you can go and try it out yourself. Um, this deals with commit manipulation, right? So how to manipulate the commit graph, uh, right? Um, how to manipulate the commit graph, um, how to, you know, uh, revert commits, how to reset and uh, undo changes to, you know, uh, like restore changes that you have modified, uh, uh, cherry pick, when I say cherry pick, uh, yeah, it means to plug a commit, right? And so on. So feel free to gi uh, give this a try. Um, yeah. And uh, if you need any help, right, uh, you know, um, feel free to ask in the MS Teams uh, chat. Uh, I will try to re I will reply, right? Um, yeah. So uh, where to go from here, right? Um, you should look into some Git workflows, right? Uh, decide on how you might want to work on, you know, how you might want to use Git uh, to work as, uh, you know, in, in your Orbital uh, team, right? Um, you know, keeping in mind that it's just a two-person, um, yeah, it's just two of you, right? So you might not want to, you, you might be able to work with a very simple workflow, right? Maybe you just want to all commit to master, right? Um, you know, instead of having, or you might want to, maybe you want to have pull request uh, to master from both of you and then you can both review the code that the other one has written, something like that, right? Uh, that is up to you. Lah. Yeah, but usually for a smaller project, I personally would just go with a simpler workflow. Lah. Everyone just, you know, just commit the changes directly to master, right? Um, because it's small enough. Okay, um, and you, and uh, I'm just a bit of advertisement. Lah. So you can check out this uh, advanced Git, uh, workshop, right? Um, it covers some of this part that, uh, this commit manip manipulation part, right? Some of it is covered in advanced Git. Yeah, there is a recording and the slides here, right? Um, yeah. And you can also, you know, uh, yeah, check out you know, some of these, yeah. Um, yeah, so that is it for the workshop. Uh, thank you for attending. I hope it has been helpful, right? Um, you can access the recording. I will upload the recording onto YouTube, right? And I will send the link in MS Teams. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. I'll just stay around. I'll, I'll probably stay around for a while uh, because the next run is running at one o'clock. Okay, let me answer the questions. Uh, so for slide 30 on rebase, is rebase just saving a line on merging the local branch to master before you remote? before you merge the remote branch to master what is like 30 30 you mean this one No, it's not just that because it does different behavior. So whenever you pull, right? When a pull will already like um, pull will already do a merge for you, right? Um, it's just exactly it, it affects, but it affects exactly how you are um oh give me a second. Uh it affects exactly how you know the the, the graph appears, right? So if you do not rebase, you're going to end up with, you're going to merge like this. You want to create a merge commit, right? Um, and then when you push, you will push the merge commit as well, right? Um, but if you rebase, right, instead of creating this merge commit, you are just going to do this, right? And the difference is that if this was your original local, um, if you had originally a local commit like that, right? These two commits are different, right? Um, but if you were to create a new merge commit, right, you're not changing either of these commits, you're just creating a new merge commit, right? So that's the difference between rebase and merge, right? If you rebase, you're actually creating a new commit that applies the changes uh, that you have on top of the uh, remote master, which may have new changes below it, right? So, it not, not say to tidy up, but it creates a linear history, which 
some projects prefer, la, right? Uh, and some projects do not like to have merge commits, right? Therefore, they prefer to rebase instead of do a, you know, a merge, right? This, this is what we call a non-fast forward merge, right? Because you cannot fast forward, therefore you create a merge commit, right? Um, if you do not want a merge commit, then what you do is to rebase instead. <coughs> And uh, if you rebase, then it will avoid creating this merge commit and instead it will just uh, reapply whatever commits you have. Uh, so in the log, okay, so when you have a log, in the log, right, in this case, you will have four commits, right? So you have like, uh, let's say this A, uh, B, right? C and D, right? Then you will end up with like D, right? Um, and then uh, probably, I, I don't know what order exactly, but you end up with like that, and then uh, A, right? And in this case, uh, let's say this A, uh, B, and this is uh, C, right? You just end up with C, B, A. So it's a linear history. And I would say, to me, I, I, prefer, I do prefer this, right? It's very cleaner. No, there is no D in this case. D is, there is no D created in the first place, right? When you rebase, you're not creating a merge commit. So when you when you do a non-rebase, right? That means you do a normal merge, you are creating a merge commit, right? In this case, right? Because you can't fast forward. In this case, when you rebase, when you rebase, you are not creating a merge commit. There is no D. Right. The D is the merge commit, which, which is not created when you do a rebase. Right? You're just applying C, uh, your original C, right? and you're, you're, you're just reapplying your original C on top of now B instead of A. Right? And yeah, therefore, you do not need a merge commit. Does that make sense? Or do you, do you want me to... I, I can show you, okay, so there is this website, right, which I actually wanted to show, but um, there is this website that actually helps, that uh, shows you a bit about grid branching, right? So I can show you what the difference is, okay? So, um, so let's say we create uh, some comments, right? Um, And this is just a simulator, of course, so it doesn't, you don't have to actually make any changes, right? Um, so now we have two branches, right? I'm going to, so this is a scenario, right? You have two branches that have two commits, uh, as in you have two branches that both have a single commit on top of main, right? Uh, or master, and they have diverged, right? Let me, let me just rename. Um, yeah, I'm kidding me. Never mind. Okay, so now we want to um, we want to merge B one and B two, right? Um, so one option, right? So we can merge B one in, and when we do that it's a fast forward merge, right? Because uh, B1 is actually a descendant of main, right? But now we cannot merge B2 in without creating a merge commit, right? Because um, B2 uh, is not a descendant of main anymore, right? So there are two options again. So if we just do git merge B2, it's going to create this merge commit, right? This is a merge commit because it doesn't add any new content, so-called. It just merges these two diverging branches or diverging commits. Um, But it's also possible to, uh, you can also do a rebase, right? When, and what you're doing in a rebase is basically, um, suppose, that, um, suppose that this is the remote branch that you're pulling from, right? Uh, then you just, what, you're basically just doing a git rebase on B2, right? And what this does is it, makes a new commit um, 
based on the differences between C2, uh, C3 two, and the ancestor, right? And then it will apply those changes on top of, uh, yeah, on top of the, your new base, right? So it's going to reapply those commits, right? And then, um, yeah, and then that's your new branch uh, here. So uh, in this case, if you were to do that, right, then this will not exist at all, right? So all you will see is this uh, linear history. I mean, sorry, this, this will still be there, right? Uh, this will still be there, right? Um, but, so this is your, sorry, I mean, this is your original uh, local changes, right? Um, and this is the new um, history, and you can see that it's linear, right? It's, uh, instead of having this merge commit here, right? Uh, which is no longer linear, right? It will just be linear. Yeah. All right. Um, let me see. I hope I have, I hope. What's the convention for when to use branches? Is it for version releases, marking unstable or stable builds since it's just a pointer to a commit? Uh, okay, it is just a pointer to a commit, right? But it's how you differentiate different lines of uh, um, development, right? So th there's another thing called tags, right? And that, those are actually really just pointers to a commit, right? Branches are implemented as pointers or commit, but they have a behavior that sort of lets you treat them as actual branches. You know, like you can commit to a branch, right? And that will move the branch to, you know, um, that, will that will move a branch to a different, as in when you commit to a branch, you'll update the branch to point to the new commit and so on. So you can, although it is a pointer to a commit, right? You don't have to, as in, it's not, it's not just that, right? Uh, it's not just a different label for commit because it all the other commands of uh, let you treat a branch as if it were really a branch, right? Not just, um, you know. Uh, remember, everything in Git is a branch, right? Um, there is no such thing in, uh, in subversion or whatever where you have a main trunk or something like that, right? Everything in Git is a branch. You just have a main branch. Okay. Um, so if you were to... If you were to be, if you were like, let's say marking releases or, you know, if you're marking releases, right, I will use a tag for that, right? Um, and you can Google git tag, right? T-A-G tag, right? Um, those are, tags are actually, you know, just, just brand, uh, pointers to a commit, right? Um, and that is what the, if you go and look at GitHub, um, there is this releases feature, right? Uh, and these are based on tags, right? So you create a new release based on a tag and the tag, you need to uh, specify a particular branch for it, right? That's a GitHub. Uh, that, that's Git tags. Uh, that's why you use to do releases. Yeah. So how you might want to use branch, for example, uh, you have a main branch and then you might want to have, uh, if you're developing a new feature, you might want to have a new branch for that feature or things like that, right? Um, yeah, you can have branches for a feature or maybe you want to have, maybe you have released a, an app ready and then you, um, you want to have a branch for, you know, continued development and you want to have another branch just to maintain the sort of stable version or do maintenance on the stable version. So uh, you, you, you have a main branch where you continue to do uh, develop new features, right? And then you have a stable branch where you just fix bugs in the existing uh, stable version right? and then you can create you know uh, point releases or patch releases on from the stable branch and then you continue to develop your features on the main branch um, how to revert to previous version and update the previous version to both local machine and online repository <coughs> okay how do you do that right um that is where you would use, okay, so, okay, so we have um, a few, uh, we have a few commits here. So suppose we want to revert to a previous commit, right? Um, what you want to do is use git reset. And you specify the commit that you want to reset to, right? So now you can see that master actually points to master actually, the hit master actually points to uh, this commit, right? Um, 
which is you know not the latest commit, right? It, it, we reverted to a previous commit. <coughs> and um, and this is different from a uh, git revert, huh? Because this is just making the branch go back to the previous commit, right? If you actually want to, the, the other way to revert something is to create a commit. You create a new commit that rev chain, uh, reverses the changes of a different commit, right? Um, <clears throat> right. So that there's, um, you should, yeah. Will your file in your laptop? Yes. Why? Oh, yes. It will change. As in, when you, when you do git reset. Right. This, uh, if you look at the manual, right, it will describe the different kinds of reset for you. And basically, uh, hard, right? Hard reset means that it will reset the index as well as the working tree, right? So it will both. So reset the one thing that reset does, right, um, is to move uh, a particular branch to point to a uh, move a particular branch to a commit, right? Um, then you can also choose: Do you want it to update the working tree? Do you want it to update the history? So you can do a soft reset, uh, and that will not that will just change the branch. It won't change the working tree or index, right? If you want to do, uh, if you want to update the working tree, then you can do a hard reset and so on, right? Um, okay, does does that answer your question? And uh, if you want to then push your you know reverted resetted branch to the remote repository, then you use this thing called git push. Force, right? Uh, you need to force because you cannot push. You cannot do a non-fast forward push, right? Um, and I like to use git uh, push force with least, right? Uh, because this will, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, what this does is it will check that the remote branch is you know hasn't updated in the meantime, right? Uh, so that you don't accidentally uh, overwrite someone else's changes unintentionally, right? Um, yeah, but otherwise, yeah, the, the, you have to use git push force la, or force with lease, right? In order to uh, sort of revert a commit away from, um, or, or, you know, reset a commit in the remote uh, branch, right? Uh, now, I would suggest, okay, I have a slide on this, right? <coughs> I have a slide on this. Um, it's it should you should avoid you know uh, doing this after you have pushing it because um, other people who have cloned your repository or are working on a repository right um, you know it, unless they know what they're doing with Git right um, the histories will not be diverging right um, it's, this is how you lead to like very messy uh, you know uh, merge conflicts and things like that. Yeah, so I would avoid, once you pushed it, I will avoid uh, uh, reverting it. And if what you are trying to do is to remove something that you, like suppose you committed some password or access key and you push that, right? The solution is not uh, to revert it, right? You have to revert, okay, you, you have to revert it and, and push it away from, and you have to revert it and then, uh, you know, remove it from the uh, remote repository using uh, git push force, right? But that is not sufficient to remove it from the repository because you know um, remember the, the, the commit objects are the commit objects are still there. The commits are still in the you know in the git uh, database. It's just that the branch no longer points to it, right? If you accidentally committed something uh, wrong or secret, right, you have to contact GitHub to get it removed properly from the um, from their database. And um, go and uh, go and check my advanced Git workshop, right? Um, I talk about Git GC there. Right. And GC is one of the commands that uh, is the command that lets you clean up the local, your local repository and remove any, any like uh, dangling or unused objects, things like that. So what is dot .git ignore? Um, it's a text file, right? Correct. So it's a text file that stores, yeah, it, that has the names on, or rather the paths of the files that uh, should be ignored, right? And you can have multiple of these uh, files, right? In one, in each directory, you can have, and in every directory, you can have one uh, git ignore, right? And all the paths will uh, take effect 
relative to that directory. Okay. Um, any more questions? If not, uh, thank you. Um, yeah. If you have any questions uh, later on, you can always uh, ask on MS Teams or you can ask your uh, Orbital uh, mentor, right? Um, they should be able to help you. Thank you. <laughs>